and five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome. Here's the thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's that chick angel. Banger, 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 we are separate today, but equal. Angel is that uh, chick actress this week. <laughs> She's staying in Los Angeles, California, picking up all types of gigs, speaking engagements, cars, events. She hosted Will Smith's um, book signing at the Dolby Theater. Listen. She gave birth to triplets. I mean, just picked up all the work. It's as if she always knew she'd be home this week. But you know what? We're happy uh... for her. We're so happy for her. Great week. Mm -hmm. I, she looks rested. Looks like she's been getting you great alive. rest. You no alive. red eyes. No no driving in the cold tundra of the Midwest. But we're happy. We're grateful for what God is doing in her mm -hmm. life. Amen. Congratulations to her on booking no, yet another TV show. I think this is ER Vampire Diaries, The Return or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. But I can't That's wait right. to see it come on my television screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, <laughs> quick announcements. Mm -hmm. The only tickets left really for this tour are uh, Tampa and Raleigh. Pretty much all the Ohio dates are sold out. I think Columbus, well, was Columbus is over. It was sold out. Indianapolis tonight is sold out. I mean, Cincinnati tonight Cincinnati. is sold out. Indianapolis is sold out. Toledo sold out. Cleveland, I believe there is probably close to sold out, if not sold out. Pittsburgh sold out. Atlanta's been sold out for a while. Raleigh is selling quickly for how far away it is. So come or don't. Come, though. Or don't. Angel doesn't come all the time. Sometimes she does. Just depends on how busy she is or she has to do black love or not. In I love how news, you throw it in my face as if you did not cancel a whole date in Ohio. I didn't two cancel a date in Ohio the club wasn't open yet. Oh. And you said, forget about them. <laughs> oh, but when I do it, it's a problem. Go ahead, Sorry, sir. All in all, we are really, really happy for Angel. We're just busting her oves. All right, let's begin. <laughs> uh, this is really wild. It's so wild, we we really cannot show you this video, not even a picture of it. We <sighs> just will not, cannot. It is so disgustingly disgusting. It uh, I won't be risking my YouTube getting taken down. But the brass band, I'm sorry, the rock band Brass Against Front Woman, Sophia something, uh, they were having a, quite an interesting rock concert. This went viral on Twitter a couple of days ago. Um, she pulls a guy on stage, okay? The guy lays down and she pees so much pee on him okay if you really are desperate to see this look it up although i just i i strongly recommend you do not look don't it up don't do it don't do because it. this is a road trip level i've been holding my bladder in this is a triple overtime game which somehow had no commercials this is a movie where you could not this is hours of pee. I mean, it, it was like an Adam Sandler movie, like where they rig somebody for comedic yes. effect type of urine. Like you have bladder cancer <laughs> urine because I could have sworn her urethra fell out and then her bladder fell out with it. There is no way anyone should be peeing that aggressive. Like it was exfoliant on a fan's face. That's how yeah. it was like, it reminded me of, of like protests back in the day, like fire hose strength <laughs> urine came out of this woman's coochie. And, and people so in the comments are saying there, this is white heat tape stuff. The man is white. The woman is, I don't know what she is, but she's not all the way she white. She might be Latinx. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at her, Josh. Look at a picture of her. Her name Look is Sophia Urista. Or Come on. What that Sophia sound like, Urista. Josh? She was on the voice, it looks like. What uh, that sound like, Josh? Sophia Urista? 
It sounds like she's trying to find her way back to where she's from. She's not quite there yet. More like Sophia Urethra because she peed. And the thing is, the dude, he was so happy. He was like, he was like get it. <laughs> he looked like Triple H when he comes down. Like, it, it was, was so much. <laughs> That's what it was like. It was, that's what he was Ooh, doing. You're really doing it, Angel. It, it's I thought you were pantomiming, but you really poured. No, I see that it's water, but I you really went all the way there. Yeah, because that's what he was doing. He was into it, and then what? It was this is what was really nasty. Hold on, hold on. He was like, he was like, <laughs> he was spitting it out of his oh. mouth. <laughs> it went into his mouth. He spat it out instead of oh. dying, because that's what should have happened. Death. He should have Listen, died. I'm not yucking yum, okay? No, I'm a yuck it. I don't but care if that's good. He's saying. First it's of yuck. all, here's the thing that sucks. Some poor, unfortunate soul that is a stagehand or stage crew, not the Kevin Stage stage crew, crew with the C. Somebody after that set has to go and mop that up, I right? Quit. They I don't. Quit. Oh yeah, they don't. You didn't. You're supposed to open curtains, run, grab stuff, plug cords in. You didn't sign up to clean up hot piss. No cold it's, piss. Yeah, it's cold by the end of the night. What's crazy is. I didn't know what she was about to do. I thought she was about to take a crap on this man's. I forehead. did too. I did. I too. was like, I was like, is she about to dookie? The <laughs> thing that was impressive was that she was still singing or whatever you call it. She was like, I feel a tick coming on. I feel a tick coming. Tick coming on. Feel a tick. I. Accidentally during our show, during the slightly problematic, I did a move and I had a little tss, 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 that's what I call it. A tss, 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 where I started, my Eureka said, Hey, I'm gonna take a break real quick in the middle of your joke. My brain shut down. I was like, How is she able to continue to sing her lyrics and fully push? This because this wasn't like a casually. Let me just allow myself to urinate. This was a I'm trying to knock this man unconscious with the speed and velocity <laughs> of my piss. How was she able? I'm to I went the that happened to me. I was like everything. I they were probably like, oh, Angel's really setting us up for this next punchline because she's taking the longest <laughs> pause. How do you get your brain? To still function, that takes practice. She must have been on the toilet practicing this before. That's the show. you know, that's a fantastic point. I never thought about that. Um, I don't usually be singing when I'm peeing. I might hum. I'm not performing. Basically, she's performing, and she, very. It was strong stream. It was there was. Listen, women, you have so much. Uh, leg strength because you just like she peed like she was peeing in a roadside bathroom and she's like oh I'm not gonna sit on the toilet let me just pee on him and I was just like okay so hey this is this is your bedroom thing right okay you like a golden shower whatevs a stranger a stranger's pee you can yuck that yum that yum can be yuck. Don't yuck my yum is for partners into like a group thing. A, a rock singer, like how do you get, how do you get, how do you get there? Hey, do, 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 do. I got to pee. Now I can either go to the bathroom and you guys can wait 10 minutes or I can pee on your face. And dude's like, pee, pee on me, pee on me. You want it? Yeah, yeah. I, I really I've been drinking a lot of water. I'm in a gallon challenge with my girls. I, I, I love gallon challenge. Come on up. Because he when he, he had a can stuck to his head. Okay. 
This is her before the show. I'm going to get some sucker today. That's the problem. Her urine looked like Pepsi Mountain Dew type of urine. <laughs> that looked like battery acid. <gasps> I can knock the rust off of jewelry type of urine. <laughs> I just, I just, I don't understand how bored you have to be in life for that to be the thrill that you seek at a concert. Listen, also, <laughs> there's a slight pandemic currently happening. He was like, forget, forget that. Pee on me. You. Sophia, when you are at work, I'll spit your pee. I'll help you carry on. So you don't have come to on. waste no time. Come on. Huh? I, I heard that run. Don't you? Come on. Come on. Some of your urine just piss on my body. <laughs> if you need a fan, we all we need, need somebody, somebody to pee on. <laughs> this is the so after the show, they apologize, Angel. I, listen, they were like, we weren't expecting that, and you probably won't ever see it at one of our shows again. And we apologize on behalf of uh, of Sophia. No, 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 no. She gonna have to apologize. She's Not gonna she... have to apologize. The, the thing is, Who, the why thing is she apologizing? He's in he's in heaven. It's not, people were probably it's not about. Spot. There were probably three or four people let down that they weren't heat on that night. <laughs> That's the the worst. Is the guy who's like, oh. Hug me so I get a little pee on me. Ugh. It's like he, they, people were in the splash zone, first of all. So I'm sure you're in the way that came out. First of all, like you said, it's a whole pandemic. And he's, I, we all know that uh, COVID is spread with droplets. And he's like, but this is a tsunami. So it's fine. There's He'd no probably droplets. love to get her COVID. I don't know that gentleman. But being that excited for someone to pee on you tells me that's probably the most sexual act that's happened to you that didn't include a computer screen, phone screen, and actually like human. That's probably the most close he got to a coochie in a long time. He probably trying to look through the pee like, I can't, I want to see it. <laughs> I, I want to see the the whole. <laughs> but there was, no to- <laughs> there was no toilet paper on stage. So she pulled them leather pants back up on that wet Cooch, I never that, even thought about that. She's got a whole forest growing down there with that yeaster bunny. There's yeaster bunnies. There's back. There's fungi. She got a whole bag of funyuns in her drawers. UTI. Ah, she's gonna be pissing spiders for the next week. That's what it's gonna feel like. Spiders. She better. Next thing better be some cranberry. A whole gallon, a cranberry gallon challenge. That's the thing for men. We just have to shake. We don't have to uh, wipe. But she was she was in this boat. Maybe she just dabbed it with panties. Just not if the panties are going back into the drawers with you. That's too much moisture. You are you are creating a petri dish <laughs> for bacteria to grow. To just this Moana. You know how the 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 lady in Moana the mountain. Stood up and started talking to Moana. First that of all, what is Moana? Is Moana is Moana. <laughs> Moana. Mo. Moana. Moana. This is Moana because this that's is the, the that's an Sorry. Yeah. That's the Moana. Yeah. Moana. Muyana, listen, she gonna have to go to the doctor, and if she ain't got insurance, she gonna need that crowd health. You hear me? Because listen, I do hear that you. ain't gonna be something that just gonna get, go away with some uh tea tree oil. She gonna need <laughs> some health care options <laughs> and some flexible ones at that. <sighs> um, listen, open enrollment is here, and you all know it's time to start thinking about health insurance that's right for you. And if there's a better option, when it comes to healthcare, care, it's important to make sure you're getting your money's worth. Crowd Health offers a more flexible, affordable health care option without the hassle of insurance. It isn't health care, health insurance. Let's make that clear. It's a modern way 
to pay for medical expenses. Crowd Health is a community of people who are tired of paying into a broken system. Being in the Crowd Health community community can save hundreds of thousands, hundreds of dollars monthly, and put thousands of dollars back into your pocket. I actually, have a friend. Um, who she's actually coming to the Cincinnati show. She has seven kids. Her and her husband have seven kids. And this is the option that they use. For them, it just makes more sense. Um, what they would be paying in insurance is just astronomical and not possible. So Crowd Health allows them to be able to know that they can take care of their family's medical expenses without um, feeling as though they're going to go broke just in case with the high um, premiums of insurance. Membership as a monthly is as a monthly subscription. Start and stop when it's convenient for you. Using their app, find nearly any doctor in the country with a quality ranking score. Scan bills and then throw them away. Crowd Health takes it from there. 100% of your monthly membership pays for actual health care costs, helping the whole Crowd Health community stay healthy while keeping more money in your pocket. Crowd Health is able to offer amazing prices because of its community of health conscious members. But for a limited time, our listeners get their first month free. And after you've been a crowd, I mean, a member, Crowd Health will use a fitness wearable. Excuse me, not use, it'll include a fitness wearable. That's a 30 day to try risk free plus. The fitness wearable. Just go to joincrowdhealth.com slash fit and use fit. <laughs> and use code SK. SK. There you go at sign up. That's joincrowdhealth.com slash fit. fit. And the promo code is SK. SKA. Crowd Health is not health insurance, it's a community powered <clears throat> alternative. Terms uh, and conditions may apply. All right. In other news, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Uh, we talked to the Patreon about this. We are talking about the Netflix film, The Heart of a Fall, mm -hmm. starring many blacks. Oh. Uh, Regina King, uh, Jonathan Majors, McKee Stanfield, RJ Seiler. Uh, Zazzy Beats, Dion Cole was in there. Dion Cole was in there. Ah, Idris. That's what I was trying to think of. Idris, Idris Elba, and many, many more. Uh, fantastic film. Angel, I'd love to hear your thoughts first. Um, I thought it was really good. I, of course, the acting was amazing because they hired all fantastic actors who really took their time it felt like on creating characters like Regina King her choice in her vo vocal tone the accent she decided to add to her character was just so good um I also uh loved the way they played wait a minute what y'all didn't like her accent y'all hated it I um that I was the it. one one thing I didn't I I didn't love I didn't know why I, I just I was like what are you doing that oh I but I it. read that her character might have been a Geechee uh I couldn't tell if it was a New Orleans accent or part New Orleans part something else um yeah, I, didn't and think I think because I couldn't go ahead Oh, good. So I didn't think she was trying to be from New Orleans. I felt like she was trying to be influenced by that, like region. New Orleans, yes, New Orleans accent today versus a New Orleans accent back when these westerns would have been taking place would not be Fair. the exact same thing. So I wasn't trying to like. I, it, it's a little. It's kind of like um, Chazwick Bozeman's accent in um, Black Panther. I was like, obviously, he's not from any place that we've been to right. in Africa, but also Who's Wakanda Chaswick, is not a though? real place. Did I call him Chazwick? Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> God rest his soul. You're, you're transitioning to black, like not only a black mom, but a black mom. Yeah. The, 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 the final key in the infinity. You got the walk. You got the children. You got the glare. 
The final, <laughs> the stone and the infinity stone is the name mess ups. Oh, yeah. Like our mom just said something, she wasn't supposed to, but if we said something, we get in trouble. Yeah, you shut up and let me say it. His name is Chadwick today. And I'm fresh off of working out. Um, okay, go ahead, Angel. I, I, uh, like I said, I liked her choice for an accent. I loved how, um, I loved how the women got to be masculine at the same time mm -hmm. and not just uh, like damsels in distress, even though old girl Mary messed it up for everybody. Um, that was the worst plan in movie history. I was, I was like, literally like, uh, you you did that on purpose? I mean, it was the worst plan. She walked right into there. Why did she think that would work? I, I mean, like, they smacked her in the stupid. face with that shotgun. I was like, what about that? Why did you think that would work? It did it not work. So dumb. The one thing I hated about it was how gory it was, which is very different than normal Westerns. Westerns, while there's a lot of violence, it's not a lot of, it was very Quentin Tarantino, blood squirts showing the busted open face. I really didn't, I didn't care for that. I liked the soundtrack. Uh, and I saw the twist coming at the end before it happened. Did you? Mm -hmm. This is one thing about me that I love. I never see anything coming. I am <laughs> pleasantly surprised by everything. So uh -huh. when movies have even the most basic twist, I'd be like, ah, he's the brother. No, how you did? Because I was telling uh, me and Liz were watching it and I was like, oh, they never showed how old Idris or the yeah, Idris was at the time. Right, so I just assumed he was old when he when he killed uh uh his the dad. Daddy. Um, I just assumed he was old, but it wasn't. He was young. He was young him, and I was like, "Oh, this is very good." Mm. Um, I didn't see that coming at all. I thought it was great. Um, I'm gonna tell you the things that I liked about the movie. One, they didn't say nigga at all. That wouldn't have been time period. Hey, that would have been all. I know why. What, what nigga been around in film, regardless of time period? Quentin Tarantino made this movie. They would have said nigga a million times. Because uh, the white person care. was about to say it, but she shot him. He was like, "What if he's gonna say nigga poop? We ain't no nigga poops either." By the way, Regina King just going like this. Just that, I was like, she is mesmerizing. I love her. <laughs> I mean, she's just so great. Let me be clear. The accent was nitpicky. It wasn't like it took me out of the movie. I mean, this is just nitpicky. But I think um, classic revenge Western film, I think the thing I liked the most is it was these uh, cowboys, these black people really existed. The story was fictionalized, but they all really existed. And the thing that's super america the cowboy movies the characters that that we see john wayne play and people like that those are based off black cowboys but when they get made into films they're made they're played by john wayne and uh um who's the other dude that did all those uh clint eastwood you there angel or are you frozen angel frozen i thought she was looking off to the side I was like, she's looking for a long time. Yeah, it's her. Mm -hmm. And just wait a second. I said, like, man, she's looking over forever. Yeah, King Panda, they did say the N word in Blazing Saddles. That was a funny movie, but that was a lot in a movie, too. Though. What? Blazing Saddles. Oh, yeah. They, they used to talk about that the whole time, all the time in All Deaf. And I, yeah, I finally watched it and I was like, bruh. Yeah, Sean, I've seen where TikTok, the cowboy came from uh, white people calling us boy. White people were called cow hands. She's back. Angel, yes. I thought you were I thought you was looking at something interesting. I said, man, what happened, Angel? 
But she was just looking. I off saw to the me side. frozen. I was like, "Oh no, I think I'm disappearing." Oh no. Uh. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> it was so great to see so many black characters on screen. Uh, the only white people were when they went to the white town. I thought it was really interesting to have the white people, white sand, white everything. But mm -hmm. uh, I want to say, Jonathan Majors, that dude, he, he has had a great couple of years in That's everything. Elite. Yes, him. Uh, he was good. At, he's good, been good in everything I've ever seen him in at this point. He reminds me of Mahershala Ali. I, I ain't seen you do something I ain't liked yet. From Mahershala, from Remy to Moonlight to... Luke, uh, Luke Cage, even though that was so stupid that they killed his character, I was like, this is the dumbest thing. He's the best character ever. Um, everything he's been is great. Jonathan Majors, he was in The Five Bloods. He was great. He was with Delroy Lindo, uh, opposite Delroy Lindo in that. And then he played opposite Delroy Lindo a lot in this too. Um, they were. He was good in uh, the HBO show Lovecraft Country. He was fantastic. In um, Loki, he was great in Loki. Oh, yes, he was I mean, this Loki. dude really is. He's just he's one of my new favorite actors. Him, uh, Tessa Thompson, I like a lot as well. I need to watch Passing. Uh, that her the Roof Nega, her and Roof Nega in that movie called uh, Passing. Oh, but yeah, he I didn't realize um, that you were saying the name not correctly. Oh, Roof Nega. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> I will say this. I felt the plot could have been just a twitch stronger. There was really a some plot holes. Yeah, it was a plot hole, Angel. Um, I felt like some of the the some of the plot holes, like one Mary going to the thing. I was like, going to wait Mary's plan. To, yeah, Mary's plan, and then it being oh now y'all got to because they took the money. They could have given the money back, right? They they robbed them. They they stole the money that the other people had stolen, right? They found yeah. out who that money belonged to. They could have just given the money back, right? Once they found out who it belonged to, then it became mm -hmm. this thing where we're not going to. So then I don't even understand why she went. It is was that just a plot like, hole, or is that just a dumb plan? I think it was a plot hole because. It, I still don't understand what was her drive for her to go there. Go to Rufus and them. Yeah, wasn't her 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 plan was like let me scope out the land and see what's going on, then I can come report back and we can get our stuff together. Yeah, that's a that that's a plot hole because that she could have because the thing is she could have went as a spy. She went fully as herself, loud. Oh, it's an like, error. It's not, I always okay. So my thing with plot holes, I thought it. I'm going to read the definition because I think this is what was confusing me. A plot hole or plot error is a gap or inconsistency in a storyline that goes against the flow of log of flow of logic. Yes. Such such inconsistencies may include illogical, unlikely, or impossible events and statements, events that can contradict earlier events in the storyline. Okay. I so, just thought it was like that's a big gap in the story, but it looks like. That just doesn't make sense based on how the story it, goes. She has been running all these businesses. Yeah. She is an intelligent woman. And all of a sudden she's doing something that seems stupid and there's no real justification behind it. That's a plot hole. Got it. I didn't know the def definition was that expensive. I just thought it was like a gap in time or it doesn't make sense in like time order. But the full definition means that just doesn't make sense based on the character or the story. Like she's too smart to have done something so dumb, basically. That's what I'm saying. And so yeah. I was just like, I, I wish they could have found a better way to, because what they were trying to do was heighten the stakes for the main character. The main character has no reason to ever come to that man's town out loud. Um, it went for the fact that the woman he loved decided to go there and was captured. Uh, oh, so yeah, I know they were right. trying. To, they were trying. You see what I'm saying? So they were yeah, trying. Yeah, he could have just been like, friend. "I robbed you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna run from this dude." Exactly. It's so wait, what was the reason they were going? They were trying. The they, they, were going? 
this is the thing. They knew that after robbing him, he was never going to just be like, all right, well, I guess we lost out. Eventually, he was going to hunt that man down to try to get their money. Mary was like, but if I offer him my businesses, that'll that'll cool him down. We'll be square. And you're saying they could have just been like, my bad, here's the money. Never mind. Or, or something to cool it down. Not send, not let Mary go in there like an idiot. Yeah. Like so, I just feel like they couldn't. I wish there was a better way for them to heighten the stakes. Whether it been her being them kidnapping her versus her freely offering herself up Got like a, a meal. She was That's like all. a living sacrifice. She was like, yes. "Here, take me." What you're hitting me with a shotgun, the butt of a shotgun? Why? I'm Zazzy Beats. Uh, uh, also, some of the uh, critique of the movie was um, her character was Mary Fields. The actual Mary Fields was uh, uh, black, like dark skin and fat. And they were like, no, nah, but light and skinny. And they were like, which happens in movies all the time. And I think this is actually in the in the thing. uh a little bit later in the docket, um, obviously there's actresses that look like Mary Fields actually look like. Um, I don't know why they cast Zazie Beats. I don't. I, I don't know. But one thing that I've starting to accept as an artist and a creator of art, you will do your very very best and stuff, and you'll be open to critique. And you just have to know that no matter what you do, try to do, try to be how good you try to make it, people are going to want more from it. I would have liked to see uh, Mary Fields represented by somebody that looked like Mary Fields. But also, if I didn't know, listen, I didn't know about many of these people. The only thing, person I had heard of prior to this was um, Bass Reeves. Uh, yes. Bass uh, Reeves was Del, Delroy, Lin, Delroy Lindo's character. And I actually only heard of Bass Reeves from The Watchmen, which was like last year. Uh, in the whole Tulsa thing, the kid, the black kid wanted to be Bass Reeves. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know about this many famous black cowboys. Oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hold on, because people are about to irritate me. I know he killed his parents, but he ended up going to that town to save Mary. That was the reason why he showed up during the day was to save Mary. We got to go rob a bank to save Mary. He could have just went in there and killed him. But he had to save Mary. That's the part that doesn't make as much sense to me. People be acting like I don't be knowing what I'm talking about now. Just because our opinions disagree. <laughs> but yeah, that was where I thought there was a plot hole. Was uh, But I do agree that I'm glad that they brought attention to real characters. Real, real characters. But I do wish... Um, I do wish they would have let her be played by somebody that made, that was closer to connection to. It's like what they did with Nina Simone and uh, Zoe Saldana. Woo! Oh. And it, it, the thing is, it's not like those actresses don't exist now. Like, even if you don't, even if you can't cast a fat black woman, at least get someone who could match the skin tone. Mm-hmm. Of Mary, Mary Fields was she was Angel's complexion. There's plenty of get Angel in there. Zazzy Beats ain't selling no movie. I mean, she sell a little bit, but it ain't like Zazzy Beats. You know what I mean? Like that movie sold off of Idris Elba and Regina King and Jonathan Majors. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Zazzy could have been. And she was great as an actress. Not, this really isn't about her. I mean, yeah, she was, as she her. Was great in it. As the actress, you take the role. You ain't gonna turn it down. You ain't gonna be like, "But no, nah, I'm I am too light." <laughs> she can right. be like, "No, nah, this is a great opportunity for me. I'm gonna, t- <laughs> no, I'm gonna At take 100%. it." One hundred percent. One hundred percent. She's like, "Listen, guys, I'm so sorry that I don't look like her. <laughs> Still gonna say these lines. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say these lines. Um, but yeah, I really did like um, that. There really weren't any damsels." Industry. I mean, she was a little bit like just a, just a little bit because if she they wasn't in the stretch, favors, she was damsel, but she yeah, but she, she held her industry. own. She held up, but like this, she didn't seem to be um, afraid to die. 
Right. She was gonna take that L, so I can she take was. that. If you gonna if you gonna die, just go. On, if you gonna kill me, go ahead and kill me. Um, the old girl, the one that uh uh was masculine presenting. I can't oh, remember Cuffy. the character's name. Cuffy. Yes. She was great. <laughs> she was. She was great. She, but I knew she would be great with her little self and who she talked with her mouth like this. He was faster. Mm. She talked like this. I loved it. She talked like, oh, mm. oh, are you just gonna fake count and shoot me in the side of my head? Mm. I thought she was great. I'm gonna do this next ritual ad in her voice. <laughs> we deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why. Especially when it comes to something that we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly, multivitamin is formulated with high-end quality ingredients and nutrients. Bioavailable, your body can actually use. I like taking Ritual because they taste good weight. And they make me feel good every day. And they delayed release. That's what I need. High quality vitamin D3 in just two daily pills. Ah. It's available. <laughs> Stop. It's now available for women. I'll do Regina King. How she do it? Um, I can't right now. Women, men, and teens. <laughs> Ritual multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different different life stages. Ritual <laughs> makes healthy habits easy. Your multivitamins yeah. are delivered to your door every month. For free, always. I mean, excuse me, for free shipping. Not you got to pay for your multivitamins, <laughs> but your shipping is free. Um, you can start, snooze, or cancel your scrip- subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll return your or your first order. So if you're like, ah, it's not for me, your first order, they'll refund it. Um, but this is what we want you to do: get key nutrients without the BS. Rituals offering my listeners ten percent off during their first three months. Visit ritual.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. <laughs> start your ritual today. Again, visit ritual.com slash crew to start your ritual today. Oh man. Okay. <sighs> Look, guys. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. When it comes to losing weight, there's a lot of pressure out there to label foods good or bad. <laughs> but that just creates unnecessary dilemmas. Noom is here to change how we see food with a psychology-based approach that looks at what you eat and that looks at what you eat, but also how you eat. Instead of making you feel guilt or regret, Noom empowers you to keep going. Look, I was having brunch with Josh in uh to here yesterday, and this place had you know kale spinach frittata, and they also had blueberry pancakes. And I was like, ha, ah, you know, I should be having the frittata, but I haven't had pancakes in so long. So what I'm going to do is order the pancakes. And they had a thing called stimulus bacon, which was like bacon that was drenched in pancake syrup. And it was so good. And usually what I would do is eat that and then feel bad about myself. But because I'm on Noom, I just didn't eat all of it. Okay, I had one piece of bacon instead of five, which was offered to me. And, And instead of three or four pancakes, which is what they came, I had one pancake. And then I went and worked out. The thing about Noom is there's nothing (laughs) that's bad or good, okay? It's not a strict diet. You don't have to do two a days at the gym or drink questionable teas. Instead of trying to cram your life into someone else's idea of health, try Noom. Free yourself from the expectations of others of how you should look and what you should be and do what you want to do for you instead. Noom helps you better understand your relationship with food how to be more mindful of your habits and gives you the knowledge and support you need for long lasting change. 75% of Noom users finish the program and more than 60% of users engaged with the program keep the weight off for a year or more. With Noom, taking care of your health is empowering instead of stress inducing. No need to fear ruining the whole prog- program with one off day. Noom will help you get back on track. All you need is a daily 10 minute check in, no grueling early mornings or huge chunks out of your day. Now, listen to this. Start building better habits for healthier long-term results. 
Sign up for your trial today at noom.com slash SK. Once again, that's N-O-O-M dot com slash SK. And now back to the show. Now, somebody um, was saying the person who played uh, Cuffy, the actress who played Cuffy, didn't resemble the real um, the real Cuffy. But I'm, I was I just tried to catch a picture. I feel like it was but it might not. Maybe the picture didn't do the real Cuffy justice. I feel like yeah. they were actually kind of similar. Yeah, it, it, I agree. I was looking at it too, and I was I was looking at that while you were reading that that ad in Cuffy's voice. What the long the long problem in film is people who are dark skinned or fat or both when they are represented in film, they are not portrayed that way. They're usually light. Uh, that's the issue with the Zoe Saldana things. They basically try to darken her with makeup. And people were like, but there's actresses who who resemble Nina Simone that could have played that role. So that's uh, the issue. And also, I looked up, um, I read a whole bunch of articles of like, who are these people um, based off of? And it didn't look like they were terribly off yeah of no i'm looking and this is like I, I this looks pretty gosh darn close to me like yeah. god dang yeah uh so yeah <clears throat> i think um i really enjoy the movie i really enjoy the movie rj seiler i actually can't, I, I honestly can't even decide who was my favorite actor or actress in this huh Lakeith as Cherokee Bill was he's he's a fantastic actor. Mm -hmm. But he man, him with the shooting RJ in the mouth before the count was done. He, he plays Shiesty so well. He was Shiesty in um the movie the movie about Black Panthers. I can never think of the name of that movie. Judas and the Black Messiah. He was Shiesty mm -hmm. McGee. You know what I mean? So uh but Delroy Lindo, man, I want him to be in something I make I make one day. I'd be like, Delroy, come and play at this. And he'd be like, okay, Kev. Come on, Delroy. What made Lakeith again? I think I mentioned this about another actor. I feel like what made Lakeith so good is that as shy as he was, he seemed extremely honorable. You shot it's, a man in the back. I know, but still, it was like there was something still about how he carried himself that it was just like yeah. it didn't. Uh, uh, like Deion Sanders, he seen grimy. That <laughs> it was very much so like grimy from the beginning till the end, <laughs> till he got blown to smithereens. I but, didn't see Deion Sanders in that movie. I did see Deion Cole though. <laughs> you know what? Y'all both can kiss my ass. Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> it's so funny though. <laughs> But Deion Sanders, he just had foot surgery. I hope Listen, he's doing better. <laughs> Deion Cole, he was great. I love yes, seeing comic kids so, play these roles. Because in uh in blackish, Deion Sanders is totally different than he was in in this. <laughs> and when he played for the Falcons, he was different than he they played for the 49ers. Same. Well, listen, he was on Deion Sanders played for the Cowboys. See, it's the correlation. Y'all not trying to be here. Cowboy, Deion potato, Sanders. potato is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you be saying booty to Angel. <laughs> I don't know these people's names. Your name in your mind, your 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 black mom is just picking Deion Sanders. Listen, call for Martin. Sure my husband got my son to the bus stop all the time. There's a lot of things going on right now. I got to get to I'll work get after this, after this work. But no, I thought Dion Cole's character was grimy from beginning to end. There was something about how Lakeith played his character that even though um, ah, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Even, even though, though he, he was, was actually being shysty, it seemed honorable, and Dion yes. Cole was uh just shysty all the way. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what else I liked about the movie? They had um they had some up and comers in there. Woody the Great was it was early on. Uh, Damian Wayans Jr. was in there as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Wayans guy Jr. who played nice. um, Beckworth, he was good too. I can't think of the movie he was in before. Was he in um, 
Dang, what was he in? Michael Beach was in there. Michael Beach stay stay playing a good cameo. Don't that he? man stay working. He, he should. He got eight kids. Does he really? Mm-hmm. Does he really have eight children? Yes. He's in a <laughs> he's in amazing shape, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like he still has abs, and he fifty. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, I think he's a little bit older than that. Mm-hmm. He was in yeah. Lean on Me. He's he got suspended. Shape. He got suspended by um Morgan Freeman. I just saw that clip. He's fifty eight. That's what to say. He older than fifty, honey. Because. Yes. Look him up. Look up the images of Michael Beach. This man is in. I mean, he had to be on noon. He one of the users who stayed <laughs> on. This man is in impact. That's what I usually look like. I've been down for a couple of years, about twenty. You're and so um, <laughs> yes, he's and he's not that. He's a small. He's a comes in a petite or package mm-hmm. than what you think. He's not like. He's a. He's like. He put together. Me and his uh, wife are good friends. That's all reason why. Huh? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know yeah. that. Yes, that's why I know his children. Uh, all right. But yeah, no, they had great people in it. I thought it was, even with the critiques, even with me feeling like there was a plot hole, um, and even with possibly them choosing, potentially choosing an actress that better reflected the character of Mary and I mean, wishing that they could have, I still thought that all the actors stood 10 toes down oh, yeah. in their roles. Yeah. Um, and that it was entertaining and it was still something that like, I, I feel like we don't get to see. We don't get to see it. it. It's like black Panther. So, so we be so happy with, with representation where there's, there's no white person centered in the film. There's no white person that saves the day. There's white characters in the movie, right? But they don't have to save the day. Um, by the way, Eddie, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he was in X-Men. X-Men. He was the, I wasn't even trying to set you up. But. X-Men, the one who died at the end, not paying. I knew that was, I said, they having too much. Anytime two characters talk too, too much in the middle of a lot of action, yeah. one of them are going to die. And yeah. I was like, ah, I was like, stop talking. Ah, ah, stop talking. He shot that man in the mouth, Angel. He did all that. By the one. way, um, the director of that movie, uh, he goes by the bullets, is Seal's brother. Oh. Kiss my road. Somebody in the Patreon just reminded me. I was reading that. Kiss from the road on a Yeah. Is, have you yeah. Ever read the lyrics to that song? I heard them when Patrick was having. That's when we were doing it. I was like, man, what did you talking about, Seal? He was like, man, let me get this money. And I was like, all right, Seal. All right, moving on. Lin-Manuel Miranda. So this is the headline. This is not what he said. But the headline says Lin-Manuel Miranda slams cancel culture. It's called having opinions, right? What he actually said is this is another example of a headline not being remotely what the person said. Um this is what he, his actual quote is. Once someone, once something has success, you're not the underdog trying to make it happen anymore. You have to graduate past the mindset of like, it's a miracle. I got something on stage uh, because now that's expected of me. And people go, yeah, but what about this? And what about this? And that's not fair. I'm sorry. And that's fair. I do that with art I find lacking. He said, that's not cancellation. It's called having opinions. So I try to take that instead. Uh, stride. He was talking about how he got um, criticized for his basically his lack of Afro Latin La, Afro Latino people in uh, the Heights, and he says, "How do I still feel like I have something to say and not worry about what's in the time frame? I'm just trying to build a frame in the first place. Certainly, I have learned lessons from the reception of my work, good, bad, and different. You try to take it all, and whatever sticks to your gut is what you bring forth your next project. Okay, if you get yourself into a place of fear, what are people going to say about what I write? You're effed." It's over. And that's a place I have to really push past now in a different way. And at the end of the day, you can't control how the world receives something. All you can control is what your intentions were. And if it closes in a night, those six years don't feel like waste, wasted time because you learn from it and you put in everything you had into it. That is not saying cancel culture doesn't exist or whatever the title was. 
I mean, that's not slamming cancel culture. That's actually saying people have a right to criticize you mm -hmm. and you as an artist can learn from that and be better. I have such an issue with th these uh, bad faith headlines, but I agree with what Lin-Manuel says. I'm working on a show that sometimes, actually there's movies that I was gonna make, for example, Tony and I were talking about this. We were working on a buddy cop movie, right? And then I was looking at just the tide of police and how much people were mad about the police and all this and that. And I was like, man, I don't think we can really make a buddy cop movie right now because people don't really like cops and copaganda. Then I'd be on Twitter all the time. Uh, and it's cop this and military and uh, imperialism. And you start to think that everybody thinks that way. And then The Rock and um, Dave Batista just sold a, a cop movie. And Tony was like, I want to make this again. And uh, I commented, man, let me be your partner in that. He was like, man, shut up. You don't want to make a cop movie again. And that's me being like wanting to have something universally like loved or liked, but knowing that's not possible. This reminds me of like, uh, we're going to talk about this next, but in my last show in Oklahoma, these white people were really upset. So upset they wrote countless emails. And that's not usually a case of uh, something I have to deal with. But more and more, I'm settling into like, make you you be the artist mm -hmm. let people who are receiving the art decide if they like it as opposed to trying to make art that people like does that make sense mm -hmm. yes yeah i, and I think, think it makes part sense. Of, oh, go ahead go ahead i mean uh, no i mean because you were still in the middle of the thought so i don't i know okay. you'll lose it so go ahead <laughs> i will part of what uh, uh i think quentin tarantino said this to somebody else outside of the n-word thing uh, he said, I just try to make movies that I like and I hope somebody else will like them. If they don't, that's OK, too, because what ends up happening, and this happened to me in the writing process. You try to make like especially if you're taking notes from a lot of people. You say something Josh says he doesn't like it might be a thing. Angel loves this person might not like it. And then you realize you don't have anything that's even cohesive. You just have a little bit of pieces that a lot of people like, but nothing that anybody likes all the way through. And I think instead you have to make something that you want to make to the best of your ability, not to say you shouldn't take critique or notes or anything like that. But at some point you got to be like, no, I want to make it like this and I'm going to make it like this. And I hope people like it. But if they don't, they, they won't. Cause one thing that's true, there's a lot of bad shows on TV that people love. There's a lot of great, well-written shows that get canceled because nobody watches. The bottom line is, is there an audience for it? Um, I am a fan of critique, uh, actually. And I think at one point in time that, that was probably the parent of, uh, cancel culture. Critique? Like, yes, critique was the parent and cancel culture is the, the, the kid that's like smoking outside of the school <laughs> and you skip in class. Um, so I do think. I do think critique is necessary across everything because that's that um, I think it can sharpen you not to say that the critique is always correct or the way you have to go, but it does offer um, perspective because mm. I don't I personally don't like art that's fully um, sorry for lack of term, lack of a different term, but this is what I call it. I don't like art that's masturbatory where it's all about the pleasure from the artist because art is meant to be shared. But um, I do feel as though a lot of times people believe that in their critique that you have to then move forward in the direction they're saying you should move right. forward in. Right. And I think that's the part that um, I think sometimes as the audience, nowadays we get confused of like, Oh, well, we said this and in and, and this, like uh obviously <laughs> there are some things that might be more blanketed right and wrong, but there's mm. a large gray area that I think um a lot of people don't respect. And um, and I think sometimes on both ends, sometimes I think as an artist, we become way too sensitive to where when we get critique, we feel as though. Oh, you just want me to change. No, I'm just stating my opinion because I, you know, the audience is stating their opinion because they can. Yeah. Just this period. Boop. 
but then also on the uh so on one side artists can be hella sensitive about their art and can't take negative criticism and then on the other end i sometimes think that the audience thinks that their criticism or opinion holds more weight than what it should that's true that's actually a fantastic point i think both things can be true you can make it and do the best of your ability and somebody can not like it but that doesn't mean you have to change it you know what i mean like for example this is a small thing but the the lady who was like i don't like that you guys do the bangers 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 okay but right. we're gonna do it so you don't have to you don't have to like it it's okay for you not to like it it's okay for you not to like the show or me there's people who've been fans of me for seven years and then decide in the eighth year they're out or one year they're out and that's okay too which brings me to my next point speaking of fans Avion Crockett was on stage last week, and uh, you should look this video up. He, he posted it on Instagram. A white woman came on the stage and basically wanted to, <laughs> I don't know what she wanted, him to stop talking, him to, uh, can you put the video in, Josh? Put the video in, Josh. We're going to play the video here. It's a minute, 34 seconds. Ready, set, go. Ma'am, it's a goddamn comedy show, but it is. You gotta ingest this. What's the problem? What's the problem? Huh? What's the problem? First of all, I don't wanna know what the fuck you got to ask me. Goddamn compelling the fuck. What do you wanna know? What do you wanna know? We know you're a woman, we can tell. <laughs> Good. How? How am I insulting people by talking about sexual matters between adults? I'm talking about consenting adult shit. I have sex. I have sex with women. So me being up here describing my life is insulting to you? Then how you how can you speak for the whole crowd and tell me that I'm insulting them? Who am, is anybody insulting? No. Sounds like a resounding yes over here. A resounding agreement. Okay, your thoughts, Angel, if you were doing your jokes and a woman, she said she was insulted and I guess she wanted to speak to him about it. What would you have done if uh, if a, uh, if this woman had come on stage while you were doing your your performance? If, if she wasn't removed within the first two to three seconds. I'm leaving the stage and going to the green room. I felt so insulted for him by the club taking so long to get her off of that stage. They should mm -hmm. have yanked a knot in her ASS for being on that stage for that long of period of time because like, obviously they thought she posed no threat because of her complexion of her skin and her gender. However, we could have seen it in other, like if she would have appeared on the stage as a different gender or as a different color, it would have been a different situation. And what I don't do is work in unsafe environments. Right. That's just not what I'm going to do. And I'm not about to push through. I don't like stand up enough to fight through somebody <laughs> putting me in an uncomfortable predicament. Oh, the right. show's over. Tahir's going to have to bring himself up. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. So the fact that he had to still remain calm and not be the aggressor, right. the fact that they allowed her to be on stage that long, you talking about cussing out a manager, cussing out a, a owner of a club that you would allow somebody to be on stage with me that long that you ain't paying? Ah, oh, furniture's moving. Furniture is moving. Um, I totally agree 
with everything you said, this is another reason why I bring my own security with me now. Um, you, I was going to say you can't trust club security, but the truth is all clubs don't even have security. Some do, mm -hmm. some don't. It basically depends on the clubs. It's like 50% of them have it. 100% uh, of them are at work for another company and might not want to get mixed up. I think it's a completely unfortunate scenario to be put in as a performer because you can't you can't push her, you can't knock her off the stage or something like that. She feels so bold, so insulted, so upset by these jokes that she's like, "I want to speak to you now." What what was your goal there? What did you want to happen? Well, she, you she want him to stop? Goal. She, she wanted, wanted to, to stop disrupt. The show? Yeah, she wanted to disrupt what he was doing in order for her to have more comfort in whatever. And she looked like she was drunk a little bit, but I oh, also yeah. feel like this would be in her sober. Like it just is a magnifying glass. Uh, uh, that's what um, alcohol can be. But yeah, she just wanted to disrupt what was happening. That A black man was saying what he wanted to say on stage. Again, <clears throat> back to what I'm saying. Love a good critique. Love a good... I'm going to email you and tell you how I feel. Love a good, I'm going to tweet you and tell you how you made me feel. But to think that you have a right to come into his space and interrupt his workflow when you could easily remove yourself, it's a little different when you can't remove yourself, right? Yeah. If you're stuck in a predicament with someone and there's no way to get out of there, then yeah, okay, go ahead. Disrupt everything because you're stuck there. But she wasn't stuck. I'm sure she could have went to her car, Uber, bus, train, uh, uh, birdie, <laughs> kickboard. There's a lot of things she could have did, but um, it would have definitely not have been as, you know, attention grabbing as the that was. You know what I'm saying? She's just like, I'm going to. I don't like this. How <laughs> rumpf. I'm telling you right now, I, I I don't I don't think I would have did well at all in that situation. I don't have a transition for this next ad, so we're just gonna go into it. Okay. Because let me tell you what, that white lady would have made my husband's pain soft, and we would have <laughs> had to put some blue chew up in him. Okay, to get him functioning that night because that would have ruined everything. Listen, the fall is here. We could all use a stiff breeze and banger, banger, banger. Okay, <laughs> that's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes to stepping up to the plate. And that's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and a chewable tablet at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive the prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Let me tell y'all, when they say discreet, it's discreet. I didn't know what the heck had came to this house. I was like, <laughs> what is this? I was like, what is this? What did Marcus then got? Oh, this is a little bit of blue chew. Okay. Come a little on. bit of blue chew. Let's get a bit of blue chew. Have you out here just doing now? This is the type of thing you got to have. You got to have a uh, some time. Okay. Because blue chew gonna keep that party going. So don't have no place you need to go too quick. Because you're going to be in them sheets, in between the sheets, popping it, making it work. Um, so if you can benefit from extra confidence when it comes time to perform Blue Chew can help. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code SK. SK. At checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code SK. SK. To receive your first free a month free visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank blue chew for sponsoring the podcast yeah no that um was some obs and i hope that she's banned from that club yeah i think um 
I, I don't know what I would do. I actually, I thought a couple, a white couple was walking out of my show uh, the other day in Columbus. And um, they just went to the bathroom. They came back. <laughs> but you, you fully have the right to walk out if something upsets you. Yeah. Uh, but walk to walk up. Like, that's that's a wild. It's funny because when she was getting off the stage, she, they're like, he was like, bye, Karen. She was like, I'm not a Karen. Like, uh, girl, do you yeah. know what Karen? It's all encompassing for white entitled women. It speaks to them. I'm not a Karen because I hate when they get all fragile at the end, like they got osteoporosis. I see it all the time. It pisses me off. You were bold and big and bad and bold enough to stand up. And then when it's time for you to be vacated, oh, I, I am so. Oh, 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 oh. It pisses me off. And what also pisses me off because I never think to do that. I never think. When I am angry and I'm about to set something straight at a store to then become the victim, I always be like, but what you going to do? I stand in that. And I'm like, well, I need to get that. Activity. Well, you also know that you're not going to be uh, interpreted as a victim. I know, but I have never tried, though. I've never you're tried. An angel, you're in, your innate blackness will not knows that people will not be. Oh, she's crying. Wanna, Let me. You, they will I tackle try. you. I want to try. I want to try the. Oh my God. I didn't. I am so upset. I, just... I want to try it because I forget every time. I'd be like, ah, you blew it, Angel. You blew it. You blew it. That would be your, if you pull that off, that'd be the greatest acting job you've ever done. Better right. than all your auditions, better than all your roles, better than anything. If you were able to pull that off to where it actually worked, that should be your, you should never audition anymore. You should take the cell phone footage and be like, <laughs> I got treated like a white woman. Book me now. Let I don't, me, I'm offer me, only. Let me tell you the only reason why I think I might have some room is because I was working on being lady like one year. I, I, that's out the window, but I was working on it, right? <laughs> Instead of manhandling folk, right, or <laughs> strong arming people, right, and um, it's because one of the things I'll do is if I'm in a rush and I'm going to a store and maybe it's like ten minutes before they close, but they don't want to give me the service that they're supposed to give because they're trying to shut close down. You know how they do, yeah. like stores be like, "Oh, we're about to close," but you're just like, "But you're not closed." So, so usually that's what I would do, but you're not closed because the time says this, yeah, and the don't say that, right. <laughs> So instead of doing that, I was like, oh, but could you help me, please? I got my kids. I just, and it, it only works with guys, though. It's not going to work with no other woman. And the dude was like, all right, man, we got you. How can we help you? I feel as though there's something there that I need to tap into, Kevin. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to try and if it works, it's about to be you a gotta revolution tap into for black the women. And they entitle me of why he take women. I can't. No, the entitlement I have to leave. It's the victimhood I have to take. The entitlement. Ah. Does, I can't have that. It's the victimhood I need. Oh my god! <laughs> I just I don't understand why this is happening to me. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Ah, all right, we got something a little fun to finish. This everybody was XLL wants to know, huh? Women, everybody wants to know if you're gonna talk about um, the uh, the the tape, the the toddler, the baby, the baby. I was saving for the love hour, so y'all would get to hear that on the love. But hour. you you can give your thoughts, oh Angel. I'll reserve mine uh, for the love hour. I feel bad for that ba that girl. I, 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 I hope that uh, she's able to make decisions that better help her and her child. And um, the baby, he, he seems very um, consistent in who he is. That yeah. is something that from the little bit that I know of him, he seems extremely consistent in who he is. So I'm going to do that with him. And for her... I would hope that she would be able, Danny Lee, 
you would be able to make decisions that would better advance her and her child. That's at the end of the at the end of the day, because should nobody uh, stay in a situation where they're being treated that way and continue to allow someone to do things that only puts uh, puts them in a bad light in a bad situation. Boom. That's that's my whole thing. All right. I will talk about that in the love hour because um, we very rarely get relation relational relationship relationship topics from pop culture uh, <laughs> Thank you. Pause. Uh, Go ahead. i haven't heard somebody ask what we think about silk sonic album i haven't heard it yet um i, I downloaded it but it didn't it didn't download josh loves it um so i'll listen to that before the next one uh all right we're gonna go out on this uh xxl magazine tweeted this the other day who is your favorite rapper of all time? Mm, that's hard. I would say, and this is not that I know his entire discography, but I love him so much. And that would be, uh, why his name just fly out of my head? His name left me. <laughs> Your favorite rapper of all time name left you? Yep. God dang it. It's gone. <laughs> Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes. Yes. That makes makes a lot of sense with with how you feel about rap. Mhm. Busta Rhymes. Ludacris is up there with them too. it's Busta and then Ludacris is somewhere around here. And Walker's in top 5, ain't he? Oh, you already know. <laughs> uh, my favorite rapper of all time is, uh, man, he's been out for so long, early 80s. Toby. <laughs> it's my favorite rapper yes. of all time. I don't think mm -hmm. a rapper has to be out for your whole life for you to be your favorite. He has five, six albums. I love him. Don't at me. Rapper you dislike. <laughs> Uh, so many whose names I don't know. Booty Tay. <laughs> Booty Tay and friends. Booty Tay. I, 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 this is not to drag this man. I only like three songs of Drake's and I dislike most of his other songs. Not just, really? not just like, meh, I dislike them. I thought that was Marcus. No, no, no. I just don't have a, like, I don't feel the need to tear Drake down every couple of seconds. I'm like, do you, baby? But most of his songs, I just be like. Wow. Wow. You know, it's his voice. It's, it's mostly his, it's his voice <laughs> that I don't. Oh, oh, you know what? Let me actually, let me take Drake off of that, off of that. Let me not do that to him. Blue face. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Blueface. I, I don't even consider Blueface a real rapper, so I wasn't even thinking about him. I don't, I think he is. Yeah, I don't. He wasn't even and trying to rap on beat. He, that, right. I said, well, how are you getting, what? I'm not the biggest French Montana fan. Mm. I, don't, I, just, I just, I don't know that I love any French Montana uh, uh, stuff. Rapper that grew on you. Hmm. I don't let them grow on me. Oh, Jay-Z <laughs> grew on me. You know what? Jay-Z grew on me. Really? Now you got to understand. I'm talking about J like you got to go back in the day when I wasn't like, I was just like, okay. And then when his stuff became a little more commercial. So like when we got to hard knock life. Yeah. So yeah. is it still early? I'm talking. So I don't mean like, he had to grow on me back in early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like his early stuff, like his mixtapes and stuff, I wasn't really like, I wasn't really feeling. But once he got a little more commercial, I was like, I like this. This is for me. Um, That's interesting. I don't Who know if you grew say? on me. I, grew on me usually implies you didn't really like him at first and then you learned to like him, right? 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's what Jay Z did for me. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Who did I? I don't know. I'm pretty clear about who I like early on. I can't say there's somebody I. Big Sean. Oh, see, I liked him from the. Big jump. Sean. I I didn't dislike him at first, but I don't think I was really checking for his music like that. But when he got with Janae Aiko, I was like, oh man, they got some stuff going over here. Mm. I still like this rap music. And I also didn't realize how many of his songs I really liked uh, until much later. Most overrated rapper. Ooh, that might be where. So since I took Drake out of the rapper that I dislike the most. Mm -hmm. that might be where I would put him. And this is not, listen, I'm glad that baby making money and I'm glad everybody loves him as much as they do. And they put him in categories that I don't believe he belongs in. <laughs> but I definitely think there's where that's, that's probably the more uh, accurate feeling Title for I him. have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's overrated. Uh, Eminem. I, I'm I not love mad Eminem. At you. I'm not I think mad at you. Eminem's good. I think too many people try to put him on like best ever status. I think he's a good rapper. His Somebody earlier said stuff Biggie. Before, Somebody overrated? Said Biggie. I can agree. You can. I can. I can. I'm so sorry, guys. I can. That's a rapper who never got a chance to grow on me, unfortunately. Here's the thing I'll say about he, Eminem because I'm going to pretend soon. I didn't hear this. Overrated doesn't mean that you're not good. Did, uh, Angel says Denzel Washington is overrated. And I still think he's in, he's in my top five. I just don't think he's where people put him. I think Eminem kind of is overrated. I think he's great. <laughs> the funniest thing that happened to Eminem that really is not his fault, but that Chris D'Elia video where he was making fun of him. Oh, sausage. I could want to do the flap. I could flap. I could do another napkin. I was just flapping and rubble. It was just so funny. And I was like, he do rap like that. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's overrated. I think he's good. I think he's great. I don't think he is the top of the top. Okay, two more most underrated rapper. Actually, the rapper I dislike. Somebody just put it future. I don't like future's music. <laughs> you already know who I dislike. Say. I do not like future. I'm sorry. You know, I don't. He is who I dislike. Uh, most underrated rapper. Go ahead, Angel. Walk of walk of flame. <laughs> <laughs> you will ride for Waka until the wheels fall off. I really don't know why he has a hold on me. <laughs> he does. He has a hold on me. I, he has my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He has my it's heart. Hilarious. He does. He does. That's oh, hilarious. For he's me, a good time. Wale. I feel like P Wale doesn't get the respect he deserves as a rapper. Consistently good projects, great wordplay, storytelling, beats. I think Wale rubs people the wrong way because he wants more um, attention or not attention, but uh, credit. Mm -hmm. Uh. Somebody thought they I was gonna say Beyonce. Also a good answer. <laughs> also Somebody a good answer. Say, Kev, you don't like future because you're a church boy and he's from the streets. Maybe he's Unruly not cousins. I'm not his target demo. We're unrated. We're underrated. <laughs> Unruly cousins. As rappers? Yeah, we're underrated as rappers. I love Wale though. I think Wale doesn't get the respect he deserves as a rapper from fans or other artists. Um, last one. 
who is the greatest rapper of all time to you, Angel? I thought I told you already. Your favorite uh, doesn't have to be one who you think is the greatest. Ooh, okay. The greatest then? I will say... Um, then I probably would say... I'd say Jay-Z. Yes, yeah, so and, would I. <clears throat> I'm, and I'm qualifying that with a lot of things. I mean, uh, like the longevity of his career, how he's been able to kind of pivot slightly in order to keep his audience and also to stay... I guess authentic to his own life. Yeah. I think is uh pretty difficult to do. Rappers used to have to retire early. They did. They had to get up out of there because nobody wanted to hear that no more. That's why Future was <laughs> rapping about drinking lean when he had stopped using lean because he was like, What do y'all want to hear from me? Lean and shut up. But I don't even <laughs> use that anymore. I don't care. Fantasy me. Uh I agree with Jay-Z. Longevity has a big part to do with it. Also, the skill, craft, he still sounds good rapping. For me, I love that his uh, his rap content has reflected his life more. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not rapping about selling drugs and everything when he's not selling drugs anymore. He's rapping about things that are accurate to the way he lives his life. Uh, that's a good, good thing for me. Skill-wise, he's still very skilled at rapping. I really like 444. Is one of my, or 440. Yeah, 444. Uh, he's talking about his mom's sexuality, him being a uh, not a good father, cheating on his wife, all that stuff. That's me personally. I like that aspect. Some people like the fantasy or the, you know, like the like Rick Ross is like, I'm rich. I'm going to rap about it again. Pusha T's like cocaine. I sold it. Sticking with that. No problem there. You, that's your choice as an artist. I just think I, I just appreciate your content being able to change with your mm -hmm. life. That was one of my critiques about Beyonce for a long time is like. You're making the same type of song for a long time. You really didn't like hear a different, to me, a different type of subject matter until self-titled and then Lemonade. Um, mm. And even Adele, you can argue the same thing. Like Adele's subject matter be the same. Yeah. Every album. I, I'm going to give you I a sad power ballad. <laughs> right. From the sad white girl ballad. I don't mind people staying in their lane if that's what's going to make them the most successful. I... I only say that he is the greatest because he's someone that didn't have to do that. Some people need to do that. I don't, some people true. don't need to come up out of their lane, but I, the fact that he was able to do it and, um, and stay successful at it. I'm like, I right, play. Up, yeah, play more. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. All right. Well, Angel's got to go to work today. Um, congratulations again. All jokes aside, Angel, we're very happy for you booking that show. You. Have a great table read uh, today. Patreon. We will see you at, 1 30 eastern uh for the love hour um and i believe we're doing actually i don't know when we're doing the bonus episode or any of that stuff saturday. so i'll just wait until later. everything we said okay. saturday saturday not sure what time but it'll be saturday all right god bless you god keep you we'll see you at the conference love y'all bye all right bye guys bye Angel. there's another thing of fire there's another one There's another thing of fire There's another one There's another thing of fire There's another thing of fire With my boy Kev on stage And that chick angel